example, our f of x is negative 4x minus 5. We want to find the inverse of that. Well, if you will recall, two pre-calculus when I made y'all do this and told you not to forget, and I'm sure you have, you start by switching x and y, and we solve for y, which is very simple when it's linear. What is the point? We need to know what the inverse function is because inverses are helpful. What do you mean, leave it the same and then? But what what are you going to be finding? If you just leave x and y, then you're already solved for y. I, you're too nice. Because I, I don't understand. I never said that. I said you should always ask questions. I did not say any question is a good question. Oh, wow. oh. But thank you for asking. I'm just saying it, I don't understand the question. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I gotcha. I gotcha. My only concern with that is when you get to the more complicated examples, you may lose sight of what am I solving for. So I, I've just switched. What? Okay, so let's look at f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1 plus 3. The plus 3 is outside of that radical. Mm -hmm. sure are. So switch x and y. Solve for y. Step 1, subtract the 3. y is under a square root. So square both sides. Make sure you put parentheses around that other side. And then finally, we add 1 to both sides. So x minus 3 squared plus 1 is equal to the inverse. And y'all should know, inverse, or square roots and quadratics are inverses of each other. Okay. And we would leave it in that form because really that's probably the easiest way for us to crunch numbers. If we're having to plug stuff in, um, that's going to be the easiest way to uh, plug it in. Okay, one more typical example that we may run into is something with a natural log. Okay, so let's say, for example, our function is the natural log of x plus 4 minus 5. Again, begin by switching x and y. This time, similar to the square root, we're going to start by adding that constant that's on the end, add 5. Okay, now how do we get variables out of logarithms? Uh, e. e. We write it in exponential form. We're talking about inverses. Log inverse of E. This is the swoop. E to the x plus 5 is equal to y plus 4. And then we can just subtract 4 from the end. So e to the x plus 5 minus 4 down on the ground is the inverse. Okay? So those are just some typical types of functions we may have to find the inverse of. Over here in red, um, this is just a reminder about the relationship with the inverse. It's that whole switching x and y relationship. So if we know that f of a is equal to b, then f of f inverse of b is equal to f
majority of the time that you have to use this are in those table problems. Remember when they give you the table of like F and F prime and they just give you select values and they ask you what's F prime of 3 and or what is H prime of 3 and H is F times G uh, and you have to do your product rule. Um, the, they will do that with this. So they will do this with the inverse as well. Um, so let's do a really quick example here. Here's our function. F of X is 1 fourth X cubed plus X minus 1. of 3 that's what we want to know well we're looking at F so that's the same as saying F of what is equal to 3 yes sir it's just the it, it's just the way that mathematics is phrased So we're looking for where our function is equal to 3, so typically we subtract, we polynomial we want it equal to 0 to solve. Now this is a cubic function, we can't really uh, solve this one by hand, so we would have to graph it and find where it equals 0. is the x-axis one place it actually happens at 2 that's convenient so f inverse of 3 is equal to 2 So let's actually do some calculus with this. What's the value of the derivative of the inverse? Okay, now the reason why we have to do it this way is because we cannot, unlike those three problems that we just did where we could solve for the inverse, we can't solve for this inverse. Okay, because it would be y cubed plus y minus 1. We can't solve that for y. All right, so if we want to know what's the value of find the inverse, take its derivative, and plug in 3. We've got to set it up this way. So <clears throat> this is f inverse, the derivative of that is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of, in this specific case, we're doing 3. Well, we just found f inverse of 3. That is 2. So we're going to replace it. Pardon this interruption, but we're at volleyball meeting, part A, smart lunch today in the media center. Again, a volleyball meeting, part A in the media center today. Thank you. Now, can we find the derivative of f? Yeah, we can find the derivative of f. That's 3 fourths x squared plus 1. Right? So just plug in 2. So that's 3 over 4 times 2 squared, so that's 1 over 3 plus 1, 1 fourth. 